Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm here with O.T. Thugbenle. Pretty good job. Nice. <laughs> nice. Good yeah, you did well. O.T. is in The Handmaid's Tale, which you can currently see on Hulu, and uh, we're in studio with him today to talk about it. I am. Glad to be here. Yes. How are you today? I'm pretty good. I just got off a plane, so I'm a little mm -hmm. jet-lagged, but altogether feeling thankful. So, yes. Yeah. yeah, so you're here You're here to talk about The Handmaid's Tale. Yes. Uh, 13 Emmy nominations. Yeah, lucky um, 13. Starring this lovely lady here, Elizabeth Moss. Looking gorgeous. This is an amazing photo shoot. She looks amazing in these yes, pictures. Yes, she is beautiful. Um, also, what you find out from this article is that she's a huge sports fan and she swears a lot. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually read, but but we actually I saw the World Series. I'd never watched a baseball game uh -huh. before and the World Series was on when we were shooting Handmaids. So she was like, "Look, you should come down and check out this oh. this game." So we watched the, the I don't know how many games are the last game of the World Series right, right. together in a bar in Toronto and you know, she was a, a big fan, and so um, yeah. Did she was... explain baseball to you and all the rules? Yeah, and... I mean, it's not like the most complicated thing. I got it. You know, <laughs> you hit the ball as far as you can and right, run right. around. Um, <laughs> was basically what I got from it. But it was really exciting, actually. I mean, but mm -hmm. apparently it was a really rare game. It was but... an exciting game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that was my introduction to baseball. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Elizabeth is uh, also the executive producer and was a uh, full hands-on producer for this, uh, mm -hmm. this show. So uh, how did you get become involved in Handmaid's Tale? Uh, well, I was sent a, a script down, mm -hmm. which I, I read and really loved, and they asked if I'd tape for it. Um, mm -hmm. And um, which I did, but you know, I, I'd known Reed Morano, who is our amazing director, this mm -hmm. visionary director. We'd worked together on a show called Looking for mm. HBO, and um, so I saw she was the director. I was like, oh, great, you know, there was a connection there. And it happened really fast, actually, and uh, it was a no brainer for me. Yeah, and did you know kind of the arc of your character, or w did you read the first script and kind of think that maybe you had a smaller part to play than you did? Uh, we, we were kind of lent to know that uh, we'd find out that you Luke were... was still alive. Okay, If I'm allowed to say a spoiler alert. Yeah, it's fine. Um, Let's do it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so I knew there was more to come. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's one of the great things about Bruce as our, our lead writer, um, is that he just has a great way of weaving everyone's story in. So I, I knew that we'd we'd have some stuff to play with. I didn't necessarily know that the episode I'd get, um, episode seven, would be as um, big as it was, right. which was exciting. And to that's shoot. that's the other side, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about that episode a lot because, um, you know, it it reminded me of it. Kind of felt like a, a complete movie. Yeah. Um, it reminded me of uh, the Fugitive starring right. Harrison Ford. Yeah. 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 Did you have any? Did you pull some inspiration uh, when you were filming that? That's kind of like your. Uh, it's your big episode. You go through quite the variety of emotions. Right, right. Um, you know, how, what was your process in uh, creating <clears throat> um, that, that episode? Well, I mean, I guess, you know, yeah, I think you're right. You know, there's the, there's the Fugitive and there's also films like The Road, which I really love as well, yeah. um, and, and lots of others to pull from. But really, I think the main thing is the, the script is so rich and that mm -hmm. story of... Um, refugees, people being torn out of their land and having to make a perilous journey away from quite a, um, a horrific regime was something mm -hmm. which is in the news at the moment. We're talking about Syrian refugees and stuff like mm -hmm. that, so it's kind of in our psyche. And so I think I pulled a lot from just real events and what people are going through right now. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, you read the book, Handmaid's Tale. No, there's a book. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I read it. I mean, I hadn't read it before, but I read it. Um, I read it after I got the. And I was just, I was blown away by it. I mean, yeah. it's like a modern classic, obviously, but it's so beautiful. I actually really recommend people to go read the book, even if they love the series. Like, there's so much in the book in um, Margaret Atwood's lyricism and poetry. It's just a really beautiful novel. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, uh, did you have any interactions with Margaret? Um, I know that she was on the red carpet. I saw right. both of you on the red carpet for the premiere, but have you ever spoken to her? Yeah, we did. I mean, they're always mm -hmm. kind of like slightly humiliating conversations because I, I want to like, <laughs> you know, she's just such a great mind. I want to have this deep, meaningful conversation. I want to like talk about patriarchy and like, you know, I don't know, contemporaneous. I don't want to use, want to use all my biggest words, but I always end up just like being like, hi, hi. Hi, you know, I just have nothing. It's like I was like I've got talent crush on her basically, and it just makes mm -hmm. me like a little schoolboy chatting to her. I haven't. I'm hope maybe second series I get to really sit down and reason with her properly. But as of yet, it's just been like 
I always leave with my tail between my legs, like, oh, I should have said something smarter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. she is somebody who commands a lot of respect. She and does, and she's also got like person. a weight to her. You know, she, yeah. she just like when she stands, you're like, she knows herself, she knows mm -hmm. her power, and it's really, it's it's amazing. It's great to be around. You know. Right, and like George R. R. Martin, she's become kind of uh, the consultant for season two. Right. She's a, she's building out the world beyond the book. Right, yeah. Um, so how, do you have any hints about what's happening or has it I already mean, begun? I mean, they give us little lit tidbits here and there, but I try not to kind of like hold mm -hmm. on to anything because like in television things change so much. I mean, in the original version of The Other Side, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this, but it's too late, I've started the story. <laughs> but basically there was a huge boat crash where like mm -hmm. this, uh, we were on a, a huge like tanker and I dived off the tanker and there was this huge underwater scene and everything but things you know there, there are various restrictions that come up as you start the process of turning a script into production mm -hmm. one of which is money the other which is time mm -hmm. and um, and so things change a lot so even as I hear things which all sound very exciting by the way I try not to get married too much because you never know you know how things are gonna work out right right so um so your your character he kind of represents the past and the future because he's you know uh, such a part of how things came to be before Gilead mm. and then he becomes part of the resistance. Um, what was it like filming like the beginning like um, one scene that everybody talks about is the the protest. Mm -hmm. um, you know the women start becoming hunted down. You start right. realizing that there's more death and destruction involved right. with the new regime or the changeover. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting to be part of that because I guess it's a question we all have in our lives. So at what point do we go? Well, that's too much. At what point do we stand up and go? No, that that's that's way out of line. And I think what happens for Gilead to happen is people protested too late. People used their votes too late. People stood up and were counted too late and and things got away from them. I think Luke in many ways is guilty of that. He's kind of an appeaser, he's a placator, he's a person that it will come around, it will mm -hmm. work out. But actually, you know, the course of justice very, very often needs us to be very active. Um, and it's hard. To, to to maintain that kind of activism and not just become like, oh, it's all nonsense. It's, it's, mm -hmm. you know, politics doesn't really add up to anything. So so I guess it was really exciting for me to play that part in the, in the drama where you can see things going on in politics, which is just horrific, but yet Luke ha is a little bit apathetic towards it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you have a really emotional scene with uh, Samira Wiley at the end of mm -hmm. season one. Um, how how did it feel to kind of have that uh, that full uh, the uh, the full completion uh, from being like uh, the f the friends in the past to like mm -hmm. meeting up in the in the present day? Yeah, you know, Samira is just such an extraordinary actress, and she's a really wonderful, fun person as well, and. I don't know. I, I really, it's so funny because so many people talk about that scene and for me it's all Samira. That it's all her, the weight that she brings her, you know, that amazing balance of strength and vulnerability that she brought throughout her journey. Um, and so in many ways I feel like, you know, that's, it's so much her moment. And, and when we, we filmed the scene I was just kind of really blown away by, by what she did there. But I think especially for Luke who's what's very hard I think for those who become separated from their families by war and by um, becoming uh, refugees and stuff like that is is the lack of information the lack of connection I mean mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that we as humans need is that sense of connection and it's such a relief I think for Luke to be able to have that connection to the other side and to be able to get a sense of what's going on for his wife and child. And so it was a really big moment for him as well. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, so uh, your your cast and crew have not shied away from uh, tying kind of the, the politics that are happening in uh, Handmaid's Tale with the politics that are happening today. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what, what about, I mean, there's so many aspects. There's the separation of church and state. There's mm -hmm. gender identity, sexual orientation mm -hmm. identity, violence towards citizens, mm -hmm. refugees. What actually speaks to you the most? What do you like to talk about when you're 
having to talk about Handmaid's Tale, like, is there something that you're very proud of and how the, um, how, how you're kind of creatively expressing um, these, like, political movements? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess the first thing I would say is that these political movements are always so much larger than any one um, television show or piece of art. And then, and then within that, you know, it's Bruce Miller, it's Elizabeth Moss, it's Reed Morano who take the lion's share for that, for our creative contribution. So I'm just like a very small mm -hmm. cog in that. So I just want to put that into, you know, <laughs> perspective for me. I think th the things about the show that really excite me in terms of what's going on in our politics today is, I think it's that thing of the consequences of apathy towards politics. Well, you know, what happens when we allow ourselves not to engage in a very vigorous way against forces that would undermine us? And, and secondly, I think it's the ways, large and small, that men undermine women, whether that be in a structural way, mm -hmm. um, in an institutional way, but also just in small interactions between a husband and his wife or a, um, a father or a boyfriend or whatever, that there are ways that um, women are still undermined today, which is mm. kind of shameful. Mm. The Handmaid's Tale is kind of um, the possession or ownership on mm -hmm. steroids, basically, right. that people have over one another, the power plays between men and women. Right, right. But I think also it, can, it kind of can reflect dynamics that we see in our lives. I mean, sure, we don't have this kind of... Um, you know, religious fascist system necessarily, or to the extent it, it exists in The Handmaid's Tale, and, and maybe a husband can't take exactly the same liberties like this. But these dynamics do play out, and mm -hmm. you know, everything from the amount of violence women face at the hands mm -hmm. of men to the way men have set up systems where they dominate the courts and they dominate the big companies and they dominate the way laws are made. Um, these things are here um, now. Yeah. And it's enough to fight against now. I found it interesting, the statistic that a lot of people bring up is that a lot of white women voted for Trump, but it's actually married white women as opposed to hmm. single white women. That's interesting. Just thought that was yeah, interesting. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I mean, it is, <laughs> it, it is extraordinary, I think, the amount of people who, for whatever reason, whether it's dissatisfaction or a sense of xenophobia or... A, feel that their best option there is Trump and that n notwithstanding some of the things he's said against women this is one of the things I find most challenging and you know because I, I don't have a judgment necessarily on on the things people believe in but I, I, I would love there to be a little bit more consistency I don't know how anyone on any side of the spectrum could be all right with someone of importance saying stuff like, oh, you just grab them, or you, mm -hmm. it, it's just really weird to me that we can stomach that kind of discourse. Right, right. Okay, I'm gonna nerd out for you, uh, with you for a second here, um, because I, I need to ask you a question that maybe you can answer. All right. Um, I am fascinated by the colonies. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything, have they given you any backstory about what the colonies are? I know that there was a some sort of a uh, disaster, uh, 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 ecological disaster, mm -hmm. environmental disaster. But beyond that, you know, there's just this mystery of like, we'll send you to the colonies and you'll surely die. Mm -hmm. You know? No, well, <laughs> listen, I pretty much know as much as you do what's in the book, you know, and they yeah. talk about, you know, clearing up nuclear waste and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I don't know. And maybe there'll be something that we get to explore in the second series. But I, but I do think it's interesting, though the way, you know, you can use a kind of vague threat to maintain control over people. Oh, and, and and that's something, again, we see with, you know, threats of incarceration. Obviously, we're just talking about incarceration, mm -hmm. the high incarceration rates and stuff like that. that. That those kind of systems serve well to control people. Right, right. Um, so, okay, I would like to have a story with you called uh, First Best Last Worst. It's a game, actually, but it's not a game game. All right. It's just answering questions. Whoa. <laughs> Are you ready? I think I'm prepared. scared. All right, let's go. Let's okay. go. I'm ready. No. Um, okay. First acting job that made you think, I've made it. Oh, geez. Well, um, I would say 
you know, when I was um, when I was a kid, I've started playing sax when I was a musician first, uh, like a child musician. And um, I was this is I've gone into a too much long story. The short version <laughs> of the story is is I got to play um, a, a Nigerian version of Macbeth in an African theatre production with um, the late and great Rufus Orishayomi. And I was just a kid. I was seventeen, and we went to Germany. We went on tour, and we were paid hardly anything, enough to get some bread and margarine. But I was performing and I was getting paid and I was like, dang, I made it. That's wonderful. Uh, best story you have from the set of Handmaid's Tale? Man, best story. I can't tell you the top seven. They're all not for camera, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, um, yeah, so I, I, I don't really know. I mean, really, for, for me, the, the best times were... Um, with just me, Lizzie, and Hannah, Banana, Jordana, as I like to call her, my mm -hmm. little daughter in it. Because um, they're, they're both really fun, mm -hmm. dynamic people. And so all the scenes, like we, we had that scene where we were traveling in the boot of the car. Uh -huh. And uh, we were kind of like in a fake boot of a car. But it just meant the three of us were like just cramped on top of each other. And we would just laugh and tell jokes and stuff like that. So that was my favorite memory, I don't know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. What about the pancake scene? Was that fun to do? Oh, my God. I mean, I, I could <laughs> hardly stay in character because I was literally just watching them be like, this is the most adorable thing I've ever seen. And, <laughs> and the thing really is, cute. No, literally, Literally, <laughs> you could have, there's, there's there's an hour's worth of footage. They could have had a whole episode where you just watch these two make pancakes because <laughs> they were hilarious and so beautiful. I just you know I, I've got yeah I love those two. That's sweet. Um, last time you were recognized in public? Well, an hour ago, I think in the in, <laughs> in the, the coffee, coffee shop. Bean? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Is um. Is LA a place where people will kind of come up to you more often than in London or mm. any of the other places you live? No, I don't know. I, I don't know if I haven't I haven't done enough of a census to really measure it out. But um, yeah, I mean, people are excited about the show, and I think that's really I've really felt that. So are people asking you about the colonies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone is asking about the colonies. I'm fed up with these colony questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, worst audition experience. <laughs> <laughs> too many there was one <laughs> where <laughs> I had this audition a friend of mine came around in the morning and it was his birthday and so I was like look okay let's let's let me run lines with you and he was like it's my birthday let's have a glass of wine and I was like no I've got an audition dude so he was like come on just have a little uh, half glass I was like it was about three hours away whatever so I was like all right fine I'll have a little sip anyway I don't really drink that much so <laughs> By 2 p.m., I was kind of tipsy. And so I was like, oh no. And then I went into the audition and I was just like, it was just a car crash. It went so bad. And they were so expectant as well. They were like, here he is. And just because, like, on a half glass of wine, <laughs> I'm a cheap date. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of which, um, how is uh, Emmy night going to go down for you? Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I guess so. I don't really know what to expect expect really out of it I don't know it depends on the mood I mean I'm not really I'm a bit of a homebody to be honest mm -hmm. so I'm gonna have to like pump myself up for it but I mean I'm excited I'm excited for the show you know it's mm -hmm. like I, I don't I see it more about for the show and sure. and and all our great artists who are nominated mm -hmm. wonderful well we will see you then and great. Uh, OT thank you so much for stopping it's by it's been fun I'm gonna oh. find out about the colonies for you I'm oh gonna make thank some you calls okay right yeah now. email me yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I wanted to ask you one more thing, right. um, because I did see a show that you wrote and directed called Max. Yes, Max with three X's, M-A-X-X-X. -X -X -X. Can you explain that a little bit to us? Yeah, well, it basically it's about this pop star who was big back in when he was in his 20s, and now he's in his mid-30s, and he finds out his ex-girlfriend is getting married. So in mm -hmm. a bid to win her back, he tries to get famous again. But he's an idiot, so it goes <laughs> really badly. So it's a comedy, and people can check it out on YouTube, or if you follow me on any of the social medias, there's lots of posts up. It's really, really funny. Yeah, thanks. So, uh, yes, check him out on YouTube for Max, and then on Hulu for Handmaid's Tale. Thank you.